Right, well, it's been another month and it's proper flown again this month. It's crazy how quick this year's going. Um, and we're somewhere a bit weird today. Something a bit special will be coming out soon. We're at, um, I think it's Cast Northwest or Apple Cast Northwest, it is, which is indoor fishing. How weird is that? Uh, that's mental. But anyway, we're going to talk about that a bit later. Or we're going to do some films on that. But uh, my vlog for this month, it, it's been, yeah, been similar to not uh, usual, I suppose. I've been uh, the first round or the first match for me this month was the final round of Tom Scully's League at Tunnel Barn, which it's probably my favourite thing, without a doubt, throughout the winter. It's phenomenal. It's the best winter league, I think, that you can get in the country. For a commercial angler like myself, it's the best. Um, and it's been going all right. I mean, I weren't too far off. I'd had, a, I'd had a win, a third and a sixth. And you get to drop, there's four matches you get to drop on, so I, was, I wanted to get rid of this sixth. So last round, I drew, unfortunately, 29 on Newpool, which it's just not good, to be honest. I really weren't happy to be there on Newpool. Not that... Not that it can be terrible, it, it can be all right if you get a bit of room in that area, but 29 sort of uh, on the snake lakey bit, like a little canal section of Newpool, and it's sort of the narrow end, so it can just be a bit weird there. You tend to catch a few fish and then they disappear, which is it's out worth out on the day. But um, what I had on the day, I had some serious anglers on good pegs as well. You know I, mean? I had young Matty Dawes next to me on 31, which is a mega, mega winter peg. I had Des on 10, um, Phil Cannon on 1. Andy Bailey on 35, you know what I mean, it was, I weren't happy. With, with the way it worked out, I didn't have any room and I was on, I was against some frightening anglers that were on better pegs. But anyway, um, it fished its nuts off. Yeah, I was amazed at how well it fished it. Uh, I think 100, 100, 102 pound won the match in the end, which is, I never expected that. Towards the end of February, it's been catching 102 pound, not myself, but it, it was crazy. That, that won me like, but for me, it, it was a right weird match. I, mean, I thought, would it be in such a narrow canal? I thought I'd go straight across and catch whatever I could on pellets because they were going to give me the best chance of getting some bites straight away. Uh, and then hopefully, if I was really, really, really patient, I'd have a good run short, which is what Tunnel's all about. And sort of, it worked. I mean, I had a great start, got a £20 first hour. And for a while, I thought, you know, I can push this. You know what I mean, I've got a chance of going here. Um, and then it went flat. It, it just, slowly, my peg sort of, it, it just went terrible. There seemed to be no fish in my little skinny area. And they started catching some fish to my right where it winded out and Matty started catching really, really well. It's like a, a big weed bed on 31. He started catching dobbin against that. Yeah, and my peg went terrible, which was, there's almost nothing I could do. I, I didn't want to force it, which is so, like, so important on those tricky pegs when you draw them. It's not getting desperate. In the, the worst part of the match, which is the middle at, at that time of year, if I were to have forced it then and done too many silly things, put new lines in everywhere, I'd have de it'd have had a, a really detrimental effect for later on. So instead, I just I sort of just sat there. I mean, I dropped back into about four foot with maggots and sat there, and I caught a very, very odd fish while other people were emptying it. Um, but luckily, I caught really well later on. I mean, I, it's the first time of the year I caught down on a pallet. I fished uh, some ground bait and maggots down the edge, and I had a really, really good late run on that, which in the end, I ended up with 65 pounds, which if you'd have given me that at the start of the match, I'd have snatched your hand off. It was, that was mega from the day. Unfortunately, um, I'll say it fished its nuts off. So Matty had a hundred pound, Andy Bailey had a hundred pound, Des had ninety-five, uh, Phil Cannon had eighty-eight. I'm going to say, and the only person that was in reach, sort of, to, to improve on that sixth was Jace Brown. Was on forty-four, I think, and he's ended up with sixty-four pound. So I think I had sixty-two or sixty-three, maybe. I don't know, but he, he beat me by a few ounces anyway. So unfortunately, um, I had to carry that sixth. I mean, I had two sixths. Um, a first and a third. So I dropped one of my six, I ended up on 10 points. Really, really luckily, I managed to sneak in as um, 10 points just got you in, it was last in the money, and I had the best dropper out of everyone with 10 points. So luckily I got a few quid, I got 500 quid for my efforts. But uh, league overall, so Andy Bennett did what he does for F1 fishing in the winter, he won the league overall. I think he won the match on a day as well, just to, to really let people know. Um, who was second? I think Matty was second. Yeah, young Matty had a, a phenomenal finish. He won one of the matches as well, and he's ended up coming second overall. So he's been mega this year at Tunnel. He's, not, he's done really well. And I think young, young Jordan Holloway was third. But it was the same again, so five points. So you needed a serious, I mean, you needed three really good matches to stand a chance, and it actually came down to, to dropper for the top three. I think they all had five points for the top three. So it came down to the best dropper on the day, which is to keep it that tight for a winter league. It, it's phenomenal. I mean, and every single lake, as far as I can think of, through all four matches, I think you needed 60, 70 pounds every single match. 
Which is, it's crazy. We, we got so lucky with good weather at the tunnel this year that it, it just proved to be the best Wednesday that probably I've ever fished for, for good fishing wise. But that was that over. Uh, next up. Right, you lovely lot. I do apologise interrupting this video, but I want to remind you about Winning Ways, uh, episode 6. It's out live now, so go and check it out. I'm covering maggot feeder and pellet cone, and Jamie is <coughs> covering long pole and pellets and fishing down the edge. So go and check it out on Vimeo now. Back to the video. Ba -ding! It's, it's been a bit quiet after that, if I'm honest. I've had a little bit of time to do what I want. I mean, I've had the last three weeks of, of going where I want to do because this week chaos starts. I'm officially, uh, we're on Friday now, tomorrow, I'm on my first tunnel barn qualifier. But the last three weeks I've been, I've been like weather orientated. I've been going where the weather's made me go. So I went to Mescar straight after the tunnel uh, and that was good because it was a nice calm day. I tend to try and go to Mescar when it's, it's quite calm because it's quite an open water venue. So with the rods not being, or feeder fishing legend and not being very good at the moment, I go there when it's calm so I can fish a pole. So I went there on, on a calm day and I had a lovely day there. I didn't get many bites. Um, I think I had 12 bites at Mescar three weeks ago, but they were big fish. So I had 63 pounds, which won me the match. But it amazed me how many fish are still in your peg when you're getting so few bites and how the, the feed, I've, I've spoken about this a lot in Mescar, and how fish don't want to go on the bottom. I mean, they don't like being on the bottom in, during the winter anyway. So you've got to lay your rig constantly in strange things. You can't really dob because it's a big open, wild open water. So you've got to sort of lay your rig constantly. So I must have laid my rig in 300 times for 12 bites all day, which is crazy, but it just shows you if you put the effort in and you can work out how they're feeding, it, it massively, massively pays off. It amazed me on the day. But well, that was a, a nice day. Uh, other than that, I've been to Western twice. Actually, I, I went there once uh, with just the intention of fishing an open match and it turned out to be a pairs match, but you could fish it as an open as well. And one of the local lads, a young man called Lee Savile, grabbed me. Uh, we fished that as a pairs and it, and it was good. I had a lovely day. I drew, we had a draw on that day, eight on canal, which is, if I'm honest, I don't really like that banker canal only because of uh, the proximity of the fence behind it. It's a bit awkward chipping, but I had a great day, or a really nice day fishing. For It was in a little spell of weather that it went crazy. It went sort of 15, 16 degrees for a couple of days, but really hot sunshine, or really not hot, but really uh, bright sunshine, and all the fish come up. So it was sort of shallow fishing. I think I got 40, 50 pounds of little hide, uh, and then some big ones down the edge, but it was crazy, really weird way of fishing with how negative everything's been anywhere else or how winter orientated it's been to all of a sudden instantly be fishing shallow. It, it was crazy. Obviously the, the species had something to do with that with it being eyed. But yeah, it was, that was a nice day. Um, but they ended up that day, I ended up 83 pound that day. So I've had half eyed, half or probably a bit less, probably 30 pound eyed. And a few big F1s and big carps short later on again on hard pellets. It's crazy. It's all really, really happening quite quick this year. It's all waking up. Um, I'm come second on the day. Oh, I, I came third overall. And as a pair, mainly come second on the day. I think young Christian and Matty again, they took it out. I think Christian drew the epicenter on uh, Stretton and caught 150 pounds, won it by himself. But Matty backed him up with another 100 pounds, so they, they took it out that day. But that was great. It was lovely to be back at West, and I've not been there for a long time. That was it. That was a nice day. Uh, and lastly, I went Western again, but I made a mess. I shouldn't have gone Western because the, the weather was horrendous. It, it was 50 mile an hour wind. It was stupid. And I thought, my options were Mescar or Western and I thought if I go Western at least I can fish a nice short pole match and that's got me better chance of getting some bites and the way Mescar have been fishing I was convinced it'd be terrible I thought it's still really cold really nasty I can't see the fish having a feed and I say Ledger and just hadn't been hasn't been right for whatever reason this winter on there so I went Western I had a nice day other than the wind was unbelievable so at times I had it side on and I couldn't even hold the top kits in front of me, it was that ridiculous. But there were loads of fish feeding, that was so frustrating. For whatever reason, that, that really heavy wind staring up, it makes me want to have a go. So I ended up, say I fished a pallet and I fished in front of me on a top kit. That was the best I could do. I had a, had a lovely day, I think I got 60 pounds, which was about fourth in the match, second on my lake, but it was a day when I was quite frustrated that um, I, I couldn't do things properly because there was a way to be caught there. I could have got 100 pounds maybe, which would have been nice. But the, the confusing bit for me, was that upon traveling travel home, I phoned my mates, and Mescar had fished its brains off. Like, like unbelievable, on pegs where people hadn't been catching, there, there were 120 pound one and then 280s or 70, which is how fish can just suddenly switch on, just when you don't believe that, that they're gonna, because you're convinced that, oh, it's too bad weather. It, it's amazed me, it really has opened my eyes in the last few weeks on, on two occasions, the second I mentioned in a minute. But yeah, it, it fished its nuts off. I mean, that southwesterly wind, really, really strong, steers it up and all proper carp wanna feed which has been exactly the same when myself and Rich have been out filming for Spotted Fin 
Um, just gone, just on Wednesday again, same again, 30, 40 mile an hour winds, unfishable for a pole. But we've ledgered, we've been on arena at Cudmore, and we've been done some ledger in on there, and it's been brilliant, we've caught 10 great big five to 10 pound carp. It's amazing me that you've definitely got to think a bit more about how these fish are reacting to weather. It's not just a case of the warmer it gets that spares them onto feeding. It's, it's that low pressure, the, the nasty weather, they like it. I mean, as long as it's not freezing cold, a load of cold water going in, then they have a chew. It, it, it's unbelievable. But, so that was about it for me month. As I say, tomorrow I've got a first fish on. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. We'll catch up on that next month. Hopefully I'll um, I'm feeling a nice early qualification if I can, because it saves a hell of a lot of driving. But other than that, yeah, that, that's next thing to look forward to is big matches starting and it's time to do an awful lot of prep. So I'm going to get back to that and yeah, we'll see you next month. <laughs>